Hi everybody, Brian Balrick, Production Manager at Roland DGA in Irvine, California, here with another short video. Uh, today's topic is uh, about white ink. So for you users that have purchased a machine from Roland that incorporates white ink, this is for you. Uh, let's take a look and you can see I've already got VersaWorks running. I've got a job loaded and uh, right off the bat you look out here into the preview window and you can see these red crosshatch lines. That immediately tells you you've got some white data that is within the file itself. We're not creating the data yet. It's just come in with the file and it has white ink. Another way to verify that if you carry down in the center uh, preview window and down to the file attributes document information there under special items you're going to see the WH that and if you hover sure enough white ink so this is a file that already has been prepped uh, and includes its white ink as part of the design so let's go ahead and double click on that just to open up the job settings and I'm going to grow uh, grow this to fit the media and uh, let's go jump right into our quality settings so um, funny enough you know now that we've got it in the uh, quality settings and the preview no longer shows the hatch marks so I'm going to explain how that's happening so let's go over here to media type and you'll notice that we already have it on backlit well backlit uh, doesn't have any white ink modes and that would be why at the present time you're not seeing any preview of the hash marks so and hash marks simply again is is a visual um, verification that uh, white ink is present so to be able to see that we need to go to a media that incorporates the white ink ability so uh, an easy one for us to get to is the one that's built into the VersaWorks rip it's called generic uh, clear pet film so let's go ahead and select that one again no change I, mainly because if we look at mode we're still in a color only mode so let's go ahead and shift that um, and here we go here is a white first that's an underlaying of white at the base and then the color ink now is going to be put on top so if we look over sure enough there's our red cross hatching and you can see the design is thoughtfully incorporated the white we have some areas where it's been blocked out uh, where paper white has been allowed to show so a cool thing about this is uh, this gives us the ability to work on a variety of materials, especially the specialty graphics, um, specialty uh, films that are made by several companies. So one I've got here, and I don't know if this can be seen very well on your screens, but this is a shiny uh, chrome finish. Um, and you can see it's this design and the uh, white ink actually appears as text over here showing through and the white ink as well as shows here into the wet red areas uh, it's converse of this job where it's been reversed where this is white and this has been left blank that is what we're looking at here on the screen so this is the reverse of that but i just want to show you what the white ink can do and in this case we've got white ink occurring underneath some of the color channels of the face so it's a great uh, and also a big block of white down here with some black text so that's a one perfect example of where you can apply this and get some really really attractive effects so as, as you're looking at that i want you to imagine again what are my possibilities you know i you literally could print this on a colored vinyl you could put this down on a gold you could put it on a silver that's the beauty of white ink it allows you to underlay uh, areas of your image where it's necessary and to um, block and or show the media coming through you're not stuck with just good old-fashioned white materials we can move into these uh, really exciting uh, vinyl films and, and and other products paper products that incorporate um, different effects and actually come up with something really beautiful that you can't do with just CMYK on white vinyl so uh, this that really relates to what we're looking at here you know we've got a large field of white and then in this case the text has been knocked out so that the material can show through so um, I wanted to indicate to you over here if we change the mode back to color only then we only see what was designed in the in the file that is color only 
but I want you to pay specific attention. There's a couple things I want to start talking about with managing white ink files and how they get to our printer and some things to watch out for specifically with white ink. So uh, looking at this, I changed it back to color mode, but notice the head speed is popped right back up and to our, I believe that's our maximum setting for this printer. Oh, we can go a little higher, uh, 1019 millimeters a second. So this, again, this is the head speed. This is the speed in which the head is moved across the platen, left to right. Uh, so this is the max speed for this machine, which in this case is our BG2. Uh, so with that said, let's move it back to white ink plus color. And I want you to look and see, sure enough, our head speed has been reduced. It's now down to 847 millimeters a second. And that's going to change our print times. Notice the print time has gone quite a bit higher. I'll move it back to color only. Whoa, huge change. So really there's a mass effect here. Um, and there's a good reason. Uh, white ink is very viscous. It's thicker. Uh, it takes longer to dry. It's denser. Uh, basically the white component that's held within the suspended within this liquid is has its own properties and frankly for it to do its job it has to be given time to rest onto the material longer than these CMYK inks that are also being going to be put onto this graphic. So again let's move it back to white and CMYK. Our, our print time goes way up and part of that reason is that our head speed has been um, reduced. So uh, I just wanted to kind of start giving you that concept here of, of what's happening and why things are happening, why the print times are going higher. It's necessary. We need the ink to dry. Many of the materials that you'll be printing on with white ink, especially things like this Mylar, this uh, chrome effect material, the surface is like glass. And frankly, the time it takes for us to build up a good looking image with white, get the density looking right and to let it dry long enough to where we can then let the new color ink lay on top of it if needed, it's, it's critical. And that's why these times have been increased. So there's a reason behind these uh, times going up. We do have options. If you take a look, I'm going to change it to standard mode and we still have the availability of white and color. Or if you choose, we can also do white as well, or just, you know, only releasing the white. This gives us some, you know, interesting, uh, 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 basically options. So, for example, there's going to be some cases where you'll really, really want to build up the richest white that you can get. And sometimes on different materials, it's not going to be possible to do that with a single hit of white. So if you look, I'm going to change this back. White and CMYK color. So this is letting white hit first and then right behind it as it's traveling. So simultaneously it's going to start laying the color ink a little bit later than the white ink. It gives the white ink a chance to start setting up while, and then finally the, the color will be laid you know, a little bit after it. But it'll all happen in one pass, right? If you do that, you're locked out. You really only get one hit of white and one hit of color and both of them release simultaneously. But nice thing is I can do this. I can go to say white ink only and let's move down and I'm going to say use custom settings and now I can take our overprint. Again, this is under general. So that's about midway down to the wrench symbol. If you hover, you'll see printer controls. And if you look up near the top, you'll see custom settings and you'll see overprint. So let's go ahead and move that to two. Now, so what we've done is we're looking at the white component only. So we've made it a white and we chose the mode, just white ink only. This is the white area that we're dealing with. We're going to release it with an overprint of two. So we're doubling up. We're doubling the amount of ink that is going to be jetted onto the material. Now understand that that might cause issues. Again, some materials like this, uh, chrome mylar, they take time. And now you're asking it to do more. You're going to lay down two coats of white. Well, just like any painting job, if you're going to lay more ink or more paint, you need time and heat and uh, basically uh, outgassing. You need the, the ink to dry. So let's go back. And I want to, again, I want you to pay attention here that we have a lot of controls. Knowing that we're going to do this two hits of white, let's go ahead and move it back to high quality. Why? 
you'll notice the times jumping up again you know now look at it. it it takes into account the fact we are over print two and now the time is doubled at least so uh good reason we need more time so if we want to even increase that even more if we want to give our medias even more chance to do their job and to dry let's do this change ignore default settings for the head speed you're in full control this isn't going to affect your print quality the machine knows how to handle this automatically so I'm going to take this way down. I'm going to take 300, right? So 300 millimeters a second. We have now that head as it's being carried across. We're, you know, the speed is going to be much slower, but that means every time it passes, the time it takes for that material to go to the next section and then lay the ink down again is longer. That's more time to be able to sit on that dryer and the heat source below it that's keeping the media fresh and open and basically curing giving the chance of you know giving the, the ink a chance to dry big stuff this is really important that you really need to keep in mind when you're playing or using white ink so these are some of the tips i have for you i always when you're using white ink think about your materials if you run into complications things like dry time are still in your control you can change these settings. You can um, take your defaults and, and modify them. You can slow your head speed down. Definitely go to high quality mode. Definitely go to unidirectional. Again, we're, each one of these is increasing that dwell time, the time that the media sits on the dryer. Um, what happens if you don't? What are some of the complications that happen with white ink and printing to different materials? So a good example. So prior to starting this, I actually took one of our white ink samples. This one happens to be on a clear vinyl. And I basically pushed it and got it mounted onto this keyboard, which happens to be black. So you can see it's got white components behind certain areas. And some areas are just the color laying there on their own. But it allows the, the background material to show right through. So this is a clear area. And sure enough, it's showing the black. So this could have been a blue bike or a red car. But your design will maintain its color um, because underneath it you've got an underlaying of white which basically blocks the color underneath the white so you've now got back to your color visible from the front another a great example of what you can do with these products in clear material um, but things like clear vinyls the way they make them clear, there's a lot of complications that can set in and they mainly have to do with uh, shelf life. So keep in mind, always maintain fresh stock, especially if it's clear. Clear materials, you need to keep an eye on their shelf time. Only order what you need and try and get through it and not try to store it. If you do store it, try and bag it. Uh, put it back in the original packaging that came in or get packaging that you could put around it to basically seal it. Uh, what happens is uh, some of the components within the vinyl material itself begin to degrade over time. It's, it's, not, it's funny, white materials don't degrade in the same way that clear materials do. Clear materials are much more susceptible to polymer uh, migration. Um, so the way that shows up, and especially with a white ink printer, is you'll see crazing. So, a good example, the shelf life has gone too long, you've got a clear material, you put it in, you expect this really nice, uh, stable, uh, uh, solid field of white. But you look closely at it, and it's almost, it's crazed. It's like, uh, it's like paint that's been out for ages, and, and has reacted to the uh, environment, and has started to ridge, and crack open, and create all these, these valleys that's an effect of the material breakdown and the ink simply cannot adhere properly and you get that effect uh, it's not attractive and you don't want it so shelf life you're gonna need to refer to the manufacturer specifications lot samples so when you get material they're always going to have a lot uh, stamped on them that indicates when they were manufactured and then you need to, you have to know that, and then you're going to have to notate when its shelf life is, becomes expired. Um, that's up to you. And the only way you're going to know that is to go and research on uh, either the websites for these companies and look at the, the ex expiration of, or how long the shelf life is of each of these materials. But very critical with clear product for uh, printing, especially with white. 
you, you're never going to see it more than when you try to lay down a nice field of white and it doesn't look quite right. So there's a high probability you've reached the end of life for that roll of material. You'll probably have to get some more new, new product in. Uh, let's see. Last but not least, uh, remember I had told you that you have that option of laying down two, uh, two hits of overprint of white. So let's go back to that. Let's go ahead and change it back to white. We'll say unidirectional. We want to do it super slow. We want to change that head speed down to maybe like 300 millimeters a second. So unidirectional, 300, two over print. Great. The only other thing we have to do is go down to the next setting down. And that is the cut controls under cutting options. We're going to do return to origin after print. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned this. When you're going to do this, two-step process where you're going to release the white first because you want it to be super dense and you want to do two hits great but remember you have to come back the whole way to the very origin and pick up where you were and release the color uh, part afterwards so it lays on top of the white ink the way to do that is simply go to cutting options turn on return to origin after print when you're done with that great you basically go back here and you turn it back to just the cmyk product like you see on the screen represented, make sure that you turn off the overprint, which goes back to one. And we do not return to origin when we do this part of the job. So you get the idea. We release the white, it finished. Oh, even better. Let's do this. Let's go back and I'm going to do white ink only, right? Unidirectional, slow the head down, two hits, right? So I'm going to go custom settings, two hits. And then if you hover over printer controls, don't forget that if we want to increase the dry time even longer, you can have control of the, under the other controls. Let's go down here to custom settings. We can leave the vacuum wherever it was or where you feel comfortable that the vacuum should be. The vacuum doesn't have anything to do with your dry time so much, but right here, the dry time definitely does. So just clicking this open. Most of the time I'm looking at about three minutes is a good time frame. So what we're asking it to do is when we've done this, two hits of white gone through and produced all of the, the whole print as, as you see it here, get to the end, the machine will feed out just a little bit more so that the entirety of the print sits right on the best part of the outbound heater. And then it just lets it dry for this amount of time. When it's done, like we've programmed here, if, and, and if we go down again one more time to cutter and cutting options, and in this case, return to print origin. Uh, we should have that turned on again. So you get the idea. We've printed. We've let it sit for three minutes. This will activate it to come back to the origin. We simply go back to the beginning. And we've gone to right here. So change it back to, to color only. And make sure that the two overprint is turned off. We don't need additional um, dry time. You get the idea. Again, we're in total control of this. The good news with all these different uh, tools that we have at our disposal, it allows you to get some perfect results on a lot of varieties of materials using white ink. Uh, I particularly enjoy working with white ink. And if you're uh, fortunate enough to have one of our machines that has it, I'm sure you understand my excitement. So again, thank you very much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in another video.